Hello everyone, so today we're going to go over how to do a income statement on an Excel spreadsheet. So an income statement is normally done for a specific company to analyze the amount of revenues and their their expenses, which gives you their net income. Um, so I have a pre-made income statement here, which I will use for references, um, but we're going to go ahead and create a new spreadsheet. In a separate sheet so feel free to follow along um, so I have a new spreadsheet here and first off we want to start off with entering the title of the company so for our example we will use Elvis products international in the second row we want to go ahead and type in income statement and third rule, you want to type in time period, which in this case is from January 1st of 2015 to December 31 of 2016, just like that. And so what you want to do is merge the first rows by using the merge and center function and then center or align so you get a nice centered font or alignment for the first top rows. Okay, after you've done that, we want to go ahead and start by entering the years. So we're doing two separate years. We're doing 2016 and the income statement for 2015. So normally, you want to customize this top section here so that you separate it from the financial data. It just makes it easier to understand and to view when you're working on an Excel spreadsheet. You can go ahead and add some borders. So we'll go ahead and add two borders. And there you have it. So the next step you want to do is start by entering the titles on the left-hand side. So in the income statement, the first thing that we want to record is sales. Then we want to record cost that's sold, which will then give us the gross profits. After we have our gross profit, we want to start to record our expenses. So our first record is going to be selling, general, and admissions expenses. Second expense will be the fixed then we have depreciation, depreciation expenses, and then once we've calculated the expenses, we will have earnings before interest and taxes. And then we have interest expense, and we have earnings before taxes taxes and we finally have net income okay and we'll make a separate section for notes and we will have a tax rate to calculate earnings before taxes and taxes okay. so now that we have the titles you can go ahead and adjust by clicking the column and double click the double arrow, you get a nice adjustment there for all the separate titles. Okay, so the next step we want to do is we want to start to input the financial data. So the first thing you need to know is the amount of sales we had for 2016. So in this case, we had three million eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars, just like that. And so I want to format the way I'm going to type in my financial data. So I'm going to highlight all the columns up to net income and I'm going to apply the comma function. And I also want to decrease. I don't want any decimals. It just makes it easier to understand, to, to read. So now that I have cells, the next step is cost of goods sold. So here we're going to go $3,250,000. So you see it automatically 
places a comma in between. Now, the number one thing you want with Excel is you want Excel to do most of the calculations, or at least, at least the most possible calculations that Excel can do, so that you don't have to. So to find gross profit, we're going to go ahead and click equals, and we want to subtract cost of goods sold from sales. So we're going to go ahead and click sales minus cost of goods sold, and that should give us the gross profit. All right, so there we have it. All right, so the next thing we want to start to record is our expenses. We have 330000 and 300 of selling VA expenses. We have $100,000. Fixed expenses, three thousand of depreciation, and then now we have enough to calculate earnings before interest and taxes. So the easy way to calculate EBIT is through this formula here. You want to click equals, and we're basically going to grab our gross profit, and then we're going to sub subtract our expenses. So the way you're going to do this is the easy way is you're going to go ahead and type S U M and then apply the sum function. And now you just want to highlight our expenses and then close parentheses. And that just makes it easier so that we don't have to subtract each individual expense. We could just sub subtract the total amount of expenses. And then we're going to go ahead and click tab. And that should give us our expenses, our EBITs. So I think, I believe I did something wrong here. Oh, that's why. Okay, so let's, I, I, mis, I misinputted the cost of goods sold. So this should actually be 3,250,000. And that's more like it. So now we have our EBIT. Okay, so now that we have our EBIT, we need to calculate our earnings before taxes. But we need our interest expense first. So let's go ahead and type in our interest expense, which is 76000 And then we're just going to go ahead and click equals. We grab our EBIT and subtract interest expenses. We have earnings before taxes. So now in order to calculate taxes, we need to find out what our tax rate is. So if we can head back to our income statement, our tax rate is actually 40%. So let's go ahead and input 40% on the tax rate. Now all we have to do is just equals, grab our earnings before taxes and multiply that by our tax rate. And that will give us taxes. All right, so now that we all have that, all we need is the net income. So net income is simple. We're just gonna go ahead and again, apply our equal no key here, and then we're going to subtract earnings before taxes minus taxes, and now we have our $44,222 worth of net income. All right, so once you have the first year calculated, it's really simple to find out the next year. So I've created a second little section of inputs here so these are all my numbers for year 2015 so i'm going to go ahead and copy this because it's data that i need that i need to calculate last year sales i'm just going to go ahead and paste this here so, so that i can so i'm going to go ahead and copy this i'm going to paste it on my new spreadsheet and for some reason it's not pacing the way it should okay so what I did there was whenever you see this error or this symbol here you want to right click it number formats make sure that it's under the number category and then just press OK and there you go this should all be commas and then no decimals okay so what we want to do here is now we want to input last year's sales to our new income statement so we can calculate the current last year's income statement so we have three million three point four million we're going to copy that and place it under sales 
And again, for some reason, it's not pacing the way it should. So matter of fact, let me just do this. So what, what I'm going to do is just copy the whole thing, make sure all the formats and numbers so that that doesn't happen. Okay. Uh, next, we need our cost of goods sold. And it's still happening. Again, it's kind of annoying. But, okay. So, again, we need comma functions. And no decimals. So, now we have last year's number. So, all we have to do to find the gross profit is we don't actually have to do this manually. We can go ahead and just use this current year's formula and we can just go ahead and click and drag and that should give us our new formula here our new gross profit from last year all right so our selling expenses were again i'm just going to grab this data here um so here what i'll do is this number formats comma zero decimals that one, that should work now so if we copy our selling g expenses and transfer there we go all right fixed income is the same so we're just going to go ahead and click and drag that to the next one our depreciation expenses were actually less last year and that gives us enough again to calculate our ebit for 2015 so we're just going to go ahead and click and drag that and that should apply the formula to last year's. So you see the same formula is used, but it it go it go ahead and applies it to the next column versus if we look at this formula, it applies it to the B column. You transfer over, transfer over to the C column. All right, so let's continue. For interest expense, we have 62,000. There we go. And then earnings before taxes. So we're just gonna go ahead and drag the formula. And now we have last year's number. So I'm getting some borders here. So I'm gonna remove, remove the borders, remove. I don't want any borders because it'll just confuse where the data is going. So just make sure all the borders are gone for now. You can always edit them later. Okay, so now, the taxes is a little bit tricky because we we don't want to drag the 40% to here because there's nothing there. So if, for example, if I just go ahead and click and drag this to here, I'm going to get a zero value. So I don't want that. What I do want is the formula. So if I go back here, what I want to do is, I, if you click on the function bar there, you see that it's B13 times B18. So I want to lock this number here. I want to make sure that when we calculate this tax rate for 2015, we have the same tax rate. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to click taxes and I'm going to add a dollar sign in front of B and in front of 18. And what that's going to do, it's going to lock b18 so by putting a dollar sign in front of b you're locking the column and then a dollar sign in front of the 18 year you're also locking the row because I, I only want this box to calculate for 2015 so i'm going to go ahead and get a click tab and you can just double check make sure the dollar signs are there now you should be able to drag and find out the new tax rate for 2015 Okay, uh, there's a border missing here, so let me just add that really quick. All right, and so all I have to do now is just drag our net income, and there you have it. So that's how you create an income statement. So the only thing now that we have to do is finish up with any last minute. Um, customization we can add a border here we can add a border under depreciation expense you can add a border under taxes and then you can even add a 
you can add a double border for the net income since that's the final number that we need. And then you can also bold, bold the numbers that we need by highlighting the gross profit, the EBIT, earnings before taxes, and net income. And that's your income statement. So if we look back, it's very similar to the one we have here. And that's how you create an income statement. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please leave me a comment, click a like, and subscribe to my YouTube channel as I'll be posting more tutorial videos on financial analysis and Excel videos for financial professionals. Thank you for